right, you're on the carnival diet, loading up on steak and butter, but that six pack is still hiding somewhere right under that fat fucking layer. Well, insulation. What's going on? What is going on? And today we're tackling the question of whether eating too much fat on the carnival diet can actually make you fat. I know we're not going into any of that, um, you know, calories in, calories out nonsense. Seiko, as we know, as I've shown in my YouTube channel playlist, which I'll link below, is a load of crap. We'll dive into why and compare it to the mass balance model, which is a much more effective way of tracking nutrient intake. It's as outdated as your mum's old Tupperware box, this Seiko bollocks. Right, so let's get this one out of the way first. Seiko, calories in, calories out. The cool kids call it. It's an absolute load of rubbish when you compare it to the more sophisticated mass balance model, which I'll cite below in the references, which I always do. It's not a machine running on these numbers. It's a biological adaptive system with all sorts of feedback loops, mechanisms, thermic effect of food, digestive efficiency, hormone status, and metabolic health. The idea that you can just count your calories and magically get ripped doesn't account for all the variables that actually do matter. Now people are gonna say, oh, but I've done it. Yeah, you've done it by affecting the mass of food that you've taken in, which is obvious. If you eat less food, mainly the fat and carbs probably, then yeah, you're gonna be less fat. Now you see, the mass balance model looks at nutrient intake in a much more detailed and more sophisticated, courteous, <sighs> efficacious way. It's not just the uh, amount of calories you eat, but how your body uses those calories. Calories are just a measurement of heat. You know, what is it? One milliliter of water raised temperature by one degree Celsius. That's how much of calories, something like that. Calories don't tell your body how it is going to respond. The thermic effect of food, protein, 20, 25%. Carbs, 5%, maybe, maybe 10%, maybe, I don't know. Fats, 0 to 3% next to nothing. So they don't actually contain you know, four, four, nine calories per gram. Then the saturation level of the fat will affect it. The gluconogenic factor of the protein will affect it. The amount of cellulose in the carbohydrate, the fiber, the starch, the sugar will affect it. You know, these things do require some energy to break them down. So therefore, the calories in calories out model is already flawed based on that system. In my opinion, it's like trying to balance out a wobbly table one of those thin fucking napkins you find in the restaurant, you know, these little shit wet ones that have got like Diet Coke on them. Might work for a second, but eventually it's gonna to turn to fucking mush. And it will not work, it will fail. It's destined to fail. Now this is why counting macros is better than calories in, calories out. You're looking at obviously three numbers for a start rather than one, which is the wrong number anyway. But you're probably rolling your eyes and thinking, What's, what am I supposed to do if I can't count calories? There is a better way. So this is macro counting like I've just said. It effectively at least has a decency to account for the different types of nutrients within a food or food group. Sure, it's not perfect. You know, there's always going to be some deviations from human error. Mechanical error, maybe, if you're weighing it. I don't know. But it's a damn sight better than just tallying up a bunch of numbers on a screen based on a closed thermodynamic system. Now, macro counting does actually get into the nitty gritty by focusing on the grams of protein, fat, and sometimes carbohydrates if you're not full carnivore. It allows for better regulation of body composition because you're considering the specific impact of each macronutrient. Remember, protein has a higher thermic effect than fat, so it helps with more energy through digestion. It's like upgrading from a rusty bicycle to a decent car, but not quite a Ferrari, but at least you'll get where you're going with less hassle. Probably a lot of less breakages along the way as well, in my opinion. Not the best way to track food. Food grams, even better than macros. So it's an absolutely foolproof way to go about it because you just look at a food, you put it on a scale, weigh it and say, fuck me, that weighs 500 grams. That must mean I'm eating 500 grams of food. Absolutely, bang on, you can't go wrong. It's foolproof. So when someone tells me what your diet plan is, I don't know how many calories you have. I don't take it a step down and say what macros you have. How much meat do you eat? I eat 500 grams of 80% lean beef mince, raw weight, and four whole eggs. Okay, great. Well, how much do the eggs weigh? No, I'm kidding. But an egg's going to weigh about 50 grams. We know that for damn sure. So it's going to weigh about 50 grams. So the margin of error is quite small. So it's not a big deal. So an egg is going to be an egg, for example. But mince, fatty meat, definitely wet. Now this is far more accurate than even macro counting, especially when you're working with the same foods day in day out. Why? Because when you're buying the same food in packed standardized form, forms in right portions, 500 grams of beef mince is always going to be 500 grams of beef mince. 
four eggs is always four eggs. You aren't left guessing how much fat you're getting from different cuts of meat or relying on the ever erratic nutrition databases that try to estimate food values, often wrong. You know exactly what you're putting in your body. So tracking food ground standardizes your intake, allowing you to stay on top of nutrition. Now, not only does this method reduce or remove the guesswork, but also makes it easy to pinpoint any bottlenecks in your diet. If your sleep is off, your mood is tanking, or you're not recovering well from workouts, the first place to look is probably going to be your nutrition. And this method makes that process a damn lot easier. I've got an entire playlist on my channel dedicated to teaching how to track food the most accurate way possible. And CK might be a load of rubbish, but tracking food intake properly will give you the tools to sort out what is really going on with your diet and improving your body composition. Now people will say, yeah, but the carnivore diet, your things, appetite normalizes and stuff. Yeah, not, not for everyone. So if there's a tool you can use to become better, why not? Why leave something in the tank? Why leave things to chance and be a loser? You know, do things properly, you know? If you want to, say, drop down 10 kilos of body fat and you've got a set period of time to do it, and you know, okay, if I change my macros by this much, it's going to yield this result. Well, it's, it's the best way of doing it rather than just guessing. It makes more sense. If you've got a specific goal, you should use specific tools to reach that goal. It's not hard. Now, the biologically adaptive human body. So what makes this all even trickier is the fact that the human body is an open system, always adapting and responding to external stimuli and conditions. You can't just put a calorie and expect a specific outcome because your body is constantly changing the way it handles nutrients. Things like metabolic health, hormone levels, and even gut microbiota can all influence how your body might extract the energy that you take in from food. Now, you're not a bank when you can just deposit more withdraw energy that's not plus five, minus five, plus, it doesn't quite work like that. You can try it out for yourself, you know, eat a kilo of meat a day and find whatever amount of weight keeps your weight stable for a week, whatever amount of food that is, you try it. You'll see so much deviation, so obviously there's gonna be more deviation long term. Now, the thermic effect of food, for example, changes how much protein or fat you're eating. So if you're eating a high protein diet with say 4,000 calories with three quarters of it being protein, a lot of that's gonna have a high thermic effect and probably a high glucogenic effect. The fat is gonna be running bare minimum. That's gonna be used for energy, but it's not gonna be enough. You're not gonna be able to sustain it for very long. The same thing's true if you under eat in protein. Your fat is gonna be more likely to turn to fat to keep your body fueled up for what you're trying to achieve. If you don't eat enough protein though, you'll start to strip away muscle. That's pretty obvious. To me anyway at least so when you're formulating a diet plan based on the same old energy energy balance theory it's not even a model guys it's a fucking theory you're not taking into account how hard your body has to work out how much energy is needed to process different food groups so what about hunger signals and why does tracking still help in this case now it's also worth mentioning that for many people hunger signals will begin to balance out over time a high protein high fat kind of a diet it's inevitable i think but as your hormones and hunger signals do adjust, you might naturally find yourself eating the right amount. It just might take you a bit longer. Now, that's great, but it doesn't mean you should throw all tracking out the window. So whilst intuitive eating can work for some, I find it doesn't work for most. I mean, even if you say, I know I eat a pound of meat a day and on average three eggs, that's still a form of tracking, guys. You still have an idea of how much food you're eating and how much you're actually trying to take in on a given day. It's going to provide you more precise results, it's obvious. But and if you're looking to maximize your body composition, improve exercise recovery, and boost your overall health. Introducing Beef Up Carnival Bodybuilding Bible. 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 The ultimate guide for men and women to lose fat and build muscle. And the best part, it's only $12. Don't miss out on the most detailed resource available. Get a copy now at compositionconsultant.com. Keep an eye on what's going on inside is essential. Now, tracking lets you identify bottlenecks that could be affecting your performance, recovery, sleep, mood. You can't fix what you don't measure. It doesn't tend to just fix itself. You tend to have to intervene and find out what changes what, you know? Now, this kind of precision allows you to find in your diet to support fat loss, muscle gain, and overall well-being. So here's some practical tips for balancing fat on the carnivore diet. How would you avoid overdoing the fat? Or well, start by prioritizing the protein. Protein means... Proteos in ancient Greek. Etiology, meaning the first. 
So protein not only keeps you fuller for longer, but also requires more energy to digest. What we found in overfeeding studies is people that tend to get in about 40% of their energy intake from protein will tend to not overeat and they tend to get pretty lean. Now, do they get shredded? Some people do, some people don't. Depends on your output, depends on what your body needs. Now, fat should come in to fill your body's energy needs. But don't go overboard thinking and guzzle down loads of butter and lard and ghee and tallow and all that stuff and melt the fat away. You know, it doesn't work that way. It's not an endless supply of goodness and enjoyment and pleasure. You have to be patient. Now, for the best results, track your intake by your actual weight of your food. Like we talked about earlier, the simple change will change your results for the better in the long term, in my opinion. More importantly, allow you to troubleshoot what needs troubleshooting. Now in conclusion, eating too much fat on the carnival diet will make you fat. Too much protein could make you fat, it's a bit harder though. But when it comes to calories in, calories out, it's like crap. Compared to a more nuanced approach which applies more principles, applies more programming, which makes more sense being compared against calories in, calories out, the mass balance model I'm talking about here. And I've referenced that below as well. But you can't go too wrong measuring out your food intake in grams. Don't forget, tracking intake will give you key understanding about how your body responds to different food on the carnival diet. What affects your fat loss, muscle gain, recovery, overall health, well-being, mental state. And again, if you want to go even deeper, check out my carnival ebook for a full breakdown of everything you need to know. Hopefully, guys, this video helped you out. If it did, hit like, subscribe, leave a pleasant comment. I like them. They're nice. With your carnivore journey so far, I'd be keen to hear what you found effective for you. Do you find tracking useful? Do you find you didn't need to track? Write yes or no in the comments below. I'd be happy to have a look there and just see, tally up what's going on. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching. Check out my site at compositionconsultant.com where your journey to peak performance and optimal health begins. With a degree in human nutrition and over 15 years of training experience, I've guided more than 400 carnivores to not just me, but exceed their physique and performance goals. Through personalized consultations, comprehensive ebooks, and dedicated coaching, I'm here to ensure your success. Join the ranks of those who have transformed their lives. It's time to align your physique goals with positive health outcomes. Visit compositionconsultant.com today and take the first step towards the best version of you.